Hey folks, how you doing? It's Clay Francisco again on uh, January 17th. It's a beautiful day out. Um, well, for January in Washington, it's a beautiful day out. Um, hope you guys are having a good time. I am having a great end to my week. Looking forward to having Monday off. Yeah, this is a book review. Um, I just got done reading Shadows of the Stonebenders by K. Patrick Donahue. Um, and it is, was, a sort of a crime thriller, right? You know, one of those uh, fun whodunit sort of stories, which isn't my genre. It's not what I normally read. Uh, the reason I picked it up is because he looks like he's one of these indie author guys. It's got a little press, you know, publishing house symbol next to it. But when you flip through the book, the size of it, the way the cover's done and stuff like that, I think he's an indie author, right? I got to do some more research on him and figure out who he really is. Um, but in the meantime... Uh, I, I saw a co-worker worker reading his book, saw the quality of the book, was like, hey, I think I recognize that kind of stuff. Thanks, Amazon Print On Demand. And anyway, blew through it in an instant. It was the Krispy Kreme donut of writing, right? Of reading. It was, it was um, that light, that fluffy, boom, in and out. Um, the premise it is following Anlon Cully, who is a tech guy who made a bunch of money with like a thing called a wave drive with an H in there somewhere. Um, not really sure. It doesn't matter. It's just a MacGuffin to let you know that he's independently wealthy and can now do whatever he wants, i.e. hit on this super cute girl named Pebbles, who's got tattoos and blue hair, right? Because, you know. Um, so the, the love interest stuff's a little bit silly for me, but the main premise of this guy who's got his, you know, independently wealthy, makes sense, that way he's got all the free time to do this, had a, I don't know if he was a rich uncle, but it was an archaeologist uncle who had all of this secret stuff, these little stones that were related to a secret society that's going to completely blow humanity's understanding of our timeline and how we evolved. And, you know, it's the Atlantis myth kind of stuff, right? Where this archaeologist has discovered these certain stones. There's like the sound stone, the port stone, the life stone, the seed stone. There's a bunch of them. Uh, the one you care about is the sound stone. It's the weapon. But there's a bigger weapon. So he does a good job, right? Uh, I love the premise that he's done for the alternate history of Earth, right? The uh, idea that, you know, humanity doesn't just, you know, pow! You know, that's not how evolution works. It would be a much more linear sort of thing, not as exponential as we've seen uh, human intelligence come to fruition or come, come to light. Uh, uh, so I really like the research he did in the alternate history uh, portion of it and makes it seem very factual, very reality based. The, the stones themselves, you know, are magic, but of course, any sufficiently advanced technology, we know all about that. Um, it's good. It's light. If you like, if you like that sort of thing, right? It was a little bit light for me. I do have to be honest. Um, I will definitely read the second book, right? Um, uh, yeah, I'll definitely read the second book because they do the Marvel thing where, you know, at the end of the story, he actually becomes a superhero he's supposed to be so that by the end of movie one or book one, you actually are ready for book two, which is actually book or movie one. It's just the new paradigm. It's the way people do things nowadays. And so it's got me looking for book two, though. So you got to give him props there, right? Mm, smart. Uh, but yeah, if you are the kind of person who likes a quick read, that's actually well researched. He does a great job bringing the flood myth from a bunch of different cultures in and, and tying some stuff together. Um, really believable dialogue, actually, even though I don't necessarily believe the characters so much. They're a little bit, uh, I don't know if they're cookie cutter, but they're a little arch typical, you know? Um, but that's okay. Right. That's 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 all good. It works really well for that style of story. Right. Um, there is, you know, Anlon himself, who's the main character, who's an independently wealthy nerd, who's very, very smart, but not necessarily socially the, the most adept person. He's got Pebbles or Eleanor Carver. 
Eleanor something or other, and she is the super smart, you know, lawyer with a past. Uh, and then there's the cop lady, right, who is not quite the other love interest, but she adds a little bit of, of you know, tension. Um, and, you know, she is your standard hard-hitting woman who works 24-7 and doesn't have time for anything other than that in the gym. Um, it's got a, a character named Pakal, who I actually like, but he is the standard, you know, Latino guy who's super tiny in the black suit and you can't trust him. Uh, right? So there's a lot of those little kind of tropey things in there. But that's what makes it light. That's what makes it a fun sit on the beach read, right? If you're, I mean, if you're in for a summer book, this is it. It's great. And he's got a few books in the series. I'll have to research how many there are. Probably talk to my coworker, see what she says. Um, she's a few books ahead of me and she's really enjoying it, right? Um, and so figured I'd give it a shot. I really enjoyed it too. And it's not even my genre, right? There was a little bit of part in the mushy middle there, but the 65% mark, you know, through the book where they did the the info dump where where he went through everything that had happened and all the facts that we all knew because it's a, it's a whodunit. And that was a little bit boring for me, but that's because I don't read whodunits. For those of you who love that stuff, right, um, he had a red herring character, I think, that was intention there to make you think that they were... Um, a part of stuff and they really weren't or maybe they will be in the next few books so I like the way he's laying uh, groundwork down for the future for his series um, I like the world he's created the alternate history is very very believable the dude has done his research so yeah I don't want to extend this uh, review any longer than it needs to be because it was a short book short read short review it is fun Go check it out. I recommend it if it's your kind of book. Anyway, you guys have a great day. Thanks. Bye.